So um, yesterday we were looking at second derivatives and acceleration, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna spend thirty seconds on um, thirty seconds <clears throat> on higher derivatives, I guess. So of course you can keep going. You you have a function, you take its derivative, you can take its derivative again and again and again. And the thing is the the meaning gets kind of blurry. Um it just it, it just gets more complicated to interpret. Maybe, probably not to do. Um, you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, but interpreting the meaning of the fifth derivative is just guess. It's the rate of change in 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 the rate of change of of whatever you're talking about. But if you think of if you think of sitting on a car. Um, if you think of sitting on a car, you can understand the third derivative a little bit, although probably not super important. Definitely not as much as the second one. Um, so you know that if you go in a car that has constant speed, you don't feel anything except for bumps, but if there's no bumps, you don't feel anything. Uh, you, you, you know, you can't feel the car when you can hear it, maybe you can feel bumps, but you don't feel speed. But also, if you feel, if you're in a car that is accelerating, you feel something, but also your body doesn't move. Accelerating is just the same as going uphill. Your, your body goes back like this, and if you're braking, your body goes to the front. Uh, and it feels violent, but if you're in a car, that's if if you were experiencing braking for an extended amount of time, you would just be holding like this the whole time. Um, so one thing you definitely feel is the change in acceleration. The change in acceleration is the thing that makes you go when a car, I don't know if you can see that, uh, makes you go like this when a car accelerates accelerate suddenly or makes you pushes you to um, to the front when you suddenly hit the brakes um, so I guess I'm not gonna write anything that's all I'm gonna, I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna let you watch a YouTube video if you want it's a really good YouTube video um, it's this one it's called The Smoothest Ride. I just searched for it and there's only one video called The Smoothest Ride. This channel is incredible. It was. I don't know if it's still alive. Um, you should watch it. It's only five minutes. Uh, it's what I just said, except way better. Okay, and that's going to be it for uh, chapter two. So, um, so now we know some things about derivatives. We know what they mean. Uh, we know they mean slope. Uh, but computing them means computing a limit. And we're actually we're going to learn how to compute everything. We're um, for the for the next couple of weeks. All we're going to do is just list all the functions you know and um, learn their derivatives and learn how we could take the derivative of almost anything you could think of. It's never, I mean, the answer is never literally everything, but it's pretty close. Um, so if you, and then, and then taking the derivative becomes just an algebra exercise um, with its own rules, kind of strange set of rules. Uh, but it's, it's just um, um, a menial task. So uh, if you don't like graphs, good news, because I'm just going to do algebra for a while. Uh, if you like graphs, bad news. So, um, so I guess we start with the easiest functions. 
and we go from there. So 3.1 uh, starts with polynomials and then exponentials. Um, so um, so just like computing limits of polynomials, um, which was, I mean, stupidly easy in the end, but computing limits of, of derivatives, what do we, what do we need? Well, if we understood constants, powers, and multiplying by constants and summing, that's how you make a polynomial. Um, you take um, 4x to the fourth minus x squared plus three, and I go, so this is what a polynomial is, remember. If I could take the derivative of a power and then a constant times a function that I understand and then some functions whose derivatives I know or subtract them, I would know how to um, take the derivative of every polynomial. So um, let's start doing that. Let's start with the easiest thing. I didn't mean the right start. Uh, the derivative of a constant. So how much does a constant function change if the amount of money in the bank is always a hundred dollars? How much money are you um, is coming in or out every month? What's the net one? What's the net change in money every month? It's zero. So. Um, say we have um, say we have a constant function how do I take the limit of the, the derivative of a constant well I take this limit and now um what's the uh, what's f of x what's f of x is it for x to the six minus x squared plus three? Oh no 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 um, that was a, that was a different example. Let's call this g of x. Um, I'm saying, take this constant function. Is it g? Uh, yeah, it is. I meant to write c, but so c f of x. Actually, well, let me just let me make it. F f of x is a function that always returns three. So. f of x is 3. What's f of x plus h? What do you get when you plug in x plus h into this formula that I just wrote? Into this formula. Three. Thank you, Sam. Uh, you get three. It's the, it's the formula that anything you plug in you get three. What do you get when you plug in x plus h? You get three. Uh, so I know how to do this limit. This limit is the limit of the function zero. Uh, the thing inside the limit is the average rate of change. The average rate of change is zero if you're constant. Um, and that means that the instantaneous rate of change is zero. What's your if you're not moving, what's your instantaneous speed? It's zero. Uh, so, three. So, I mean, I, I wrote three, but um, this works for any number. Nothing special about three. If, I, if f of x is constant, then um, the derivative is zero. Or in other words, um, we already call the function c 
probably not going to call it f of x. So the first rule that we have learned in like in a list of like 10 or so is that the derivative of a constant is zero. So now, well, uh, we know how to take derivatives of some polynomials, uh, not the most interesting polynomials. Ugh. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think the next one, so the next one I want to do is the power. And then once I can do powers and constants and add them together, I, I can pretty much do polynomials. So, um, I think, I think I'm not gonna, I think I'm not gonna prove this one. So this is something that everyone calls the power rule. Some things in the book are just, I've never seen use outside the book, but the power rule does have that name. So the derivative of x to the n, um, Uh, is, uh, well, has a formula. It's n x to the m uh, minus one. So this is, um, this is it. Um, so we have, so in the past we have seen So um, in the past, we have seen that um, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Um, and so this fits um, here. Um, here n equals 2. This is x to the second power. So if I write x, um, x n x to the n minus 1, this is 2 and n minus 1 is 1. So you subtract 1 to the exponent and then you multiply by the exponent. Uh, this, this bit, um, we also have done the derivative of the square root, and that also fits. Um, uh, the, because the square root is a power. The square root is the one half power. So if I make n equals one half, uh, then n x to the n minus one is going to be one half x to the one half minus one. Uh, and what is one half minus one? Uh, one half minus one is negative one half. So you multiply by the exponent and you uh, subtract one from the exponent. Uh, and if I want to write this a negative power is the same thing as a positive power in the numerator, and a square root uh, is the same thing as a one half power. So, um, so those those are two examples, and we could we could prove this. Um, it would take ten minutes, but. Um, It's just, it's just not a thing that we're going to use again, the proof of this. Um, so I don't feel like it's the most exciting thing. I mean, I do feel like it's the most exciting thing, um, honest. But I want to move to other stuff. But um, here's an exercise you can try. Uh, try taking the derivative of x cubed. 
the derivative of x cubed, not, not using the formula, but using the definition, trying to see if you get something that agrees with the formula. So the derivative of x cubed is, um, is this limit. So, um, if you, if you, exp so you have to simplify x plus h cubed. That's where the, that's where the whole, that's where the whole thing is happening. And you need to expand this thing. There was a formula for that. But even if you don't know the formula, you could always just multiply it up, uh, use the distributive law, and this should give you something that starts with x cubed plus 3 uh, x squared h, some other things, minus x cubed. And from here, uh, you should be able to find that this is the derivative. So this is, I'm not telling you, I'm not doing it. I'm just telling you, if you want to try it by yourself, or maybe if I give it to you as homework, um, this is what, um, this is how it would go. Um, if you're very adventurous, um, well, I, Try, try doing x plus h to the fifth, or also try looking in the book at the, there's two proofs in the book. Um, so, um, so how do we use this? Well, so not that many things we can do so far, but for example, um, I can find the derivative of x to the fifth, the derivative of x to the fifth is um, five x to the five minus one because the formula says um, the derivative of x to the n is an x to the n minus one here n is five and this works for this works for real numbers um, the derivative of the cubic root. So what is the derivative of the cubic root? And, or um, I don't want to give me, the, I don't want you to give me the answer. I want you to tell me how to do it. You could change that to um, x to the one third all right, thank you, Shelby. So the thing with knowing only two rules of derivatives is that I can only give you powers uh, to compute. Uh, so this must be a power. It's the power of one third. That's what roots are. Roots are a fraction of powers. So if I write this as the power one th of, of one third, um, then this is, um, this is going to be uh, pull the exponent to the front multiplying and then subtract one from the exponent, which of course you're free to do in your head. Um, but I just want to make it clear what I'm doing. So one third minus one is negative two thirds. Um, right, one third minus one is one third minus three thirds. I could also for me, I think these are equally simplified. Um, this would both work as the simplified answers for me. Because negative power means put it in the denominator. Um, and, and then the one third in here becomes, um, becomes a cubic root. this three goes here. <clears throat> okay. Um, are there any questions? Okay. 
Okay, so big warning. And you're ahead. I don't know how to I don't know how to emphasize this. So um this is the power rule. Um the power rule only um, this only works so this formula x to the n the derivative is x to the n minus one only works for things that are x to the power of a constant. Um, if you try, if you try, um, if you try to do anything else, to the power of anything else, um, you're going to get wrong answers. Almost guaranteed. Um, for example, if you try to take the derivative of an exponential, so this is not this is um, not x to a constant. This is a constant to x. This is not going to work. Um, this is not x e to the x minus 1. If you try to do uh, so, which are anything you could think of. Um, I'm trying to think of which are the common ones people like to try. Um, basically, it really is anything. Anything you try is just not going to work. Um, the derivative of 3 squared is not 2 times 3 to the 1. Um, I guess the verse 3, we don't know how to compute yet, yet, but we will. Um, but the, the last one we do know, what's the derivative of 3 squared? Zero. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, yeah, it's a constant. Even if it looks complicated, um, the derivative of any constant is zero. Um, often in problems, people like to plug in values to functions and then take a derivative. And that doesn't that doesn't work because derivatives. Um, yeah. Miles. When you have a, a trig function and you're trying to find the derivative of a trig function and they do have a number as an exponent, you can move that to, to the front, right? Like you have, if you have sine squared, you can get two sine? No. You no. can't? Okay. No. So for anything? Any, or is it anything? Sine? Everything that is not just literally x. Okay. Um, I guess some of these are further from the answer uh, than others, but it doesn't work. Nope. <clears throat> um, Wait, so if you did e to the second power, you couldn't do 2e um, as like the derivative, like say 2e as a derivative? e to the second power. The derivative of e to the second power is zero because that's the constant. That's just a function. There's no x anywhere. That's the function that is always eight and a half or something. Um, so it has to be like a variable or some sort? It has to be a function. Um, so this is the function y equals e to the second power. It's just 
y equal, it's basically the same as y equals um, 7.38. Uh, it's a constant function. The slope of that thing is just always zero. So it doesn't work. It's literally only if the if the base is x and if the exponent is a number. And that's it. That's all we know how to take the derivative of so far. Um, so. If you just decided to make a, a to make a flow chart how to take a derivative of a power you start and I ask you is the base x and if you say yes we keep going if you say no uh, then this goes like this it's a middle finger no I shouldn't draw a middle finger I should draw a sad face um, is the exponent a number? If it's no, you go cry. And if it's yes, then you use the power rule. There you go. <clears throat> much learning um, okay um, eventually I'll replace the smiley the, the sad faces by actual answers because we are going to get all the answers um, probably tomorrow we'll learn how to take derivatives of exponentials so e to the x its derivative is not x e to the x minus 1 but we do I do have an answer for what it is Okay, so I can do powers, I can do constants. So what else do I need to get to polynomials? Um, I need to add them and I need to multiply them by, by constants. So um, see this one, the book calls the constant multiple rule, but this one, nobody calls that, nobody calls anything. So I'm going to write it smaller because the name is less important. So this is what happens when you take a function um, and you multiply by a constant. Suppose I know the derivative of a function and c is a constant. Uh, what is the derivative of the, uh, the, the product? So the derivative, um, well, the derivative is, is um, is the, the same limit we always write. Um, so this is my function now. So here I'm supposed to take the function evaluated at x plus h minus the function evaluated at x and divide that by h. I, so well, let's start with the denominator. That's easy. It's just always h. The numerator, um, well, I need to take this formula, this formula, and plug in x plus h for, uh, for x. So this is 
this function evaluated at x plus h. And f of x is just the, the function, it's just the function. Yeah, should I call it g? Um, too late for that. So this is the limit I'm supposed to compute. This is the derivative. And now what I'm trying, what I'm going to do is simplify this. How can I simplify this? The answer for how can I simplify it is by staring silently at the list of participants until someone steps up. How can you simplify it? Take the C out from both sides. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, yeah, so there's when I see two things multiply by C, I really want to factor them out. If I factor them out, I have, um, I'm left with this, and now this, this just looks like the derivative. Maybe if I write it like this, the constants right outside of that fraction, uh, now I have the limit of a product of two things. Um, I guess um, I have a rule for limits um, that says that I can pull constants out of limits. It might be called a constant multiple law. Uh, and now what am I left with after I pull out the um, I pull out the constant, I'm left with exactly um, the derivative. So you multiply by two and you take the derivative, that's exactly gives you the same answer as multiplying, as taking the derivative, then multiplying by two. So that's another rule. I guess, oh. ooh, I almost deleted everything. Fun. Um, so succinctly, the derivative of C times a function is C times the derivative, or in the other notation, constants come out of derivatives <clears throat> is what you might hear people call the, the, the this rule and not the constant multiple rule. So um, how do we do things with this? Uh, well, what if I want to take the derivative of three divided by X? Well, um, this is the function. So this is the function one over X multiplied by three. And the, the law that I just learned tells me that the three that is multiplying can come out of the derivative. And now I'm left with one over X, which must be a power because, um, it's the only thing I can take derivatives off. So can I apply the power of law? Um, let me see. Is the is the base x uh, is the base x? Yes, the base is x. Look at it. This is x um, is the exponent a number? Uh, yes, it's negative one. So this derivative. Oh. Uh, this derivative is computed by putting the exponent in the front, multiplying, and then subtracting one from the exponent. 
So that's going to be um, x to the negative 2. And then if I multiply the 3 by the negative 1, I get negative 3. And I could also write this as 1 over x squared. So there you go. Any questions? All right, so I can take derivatives of anything that looks like this. Uh, and to take derivatives of polynomials, all I need is to be able to combine these by adding them. So, next up is the derivative of the sum. So, um, Say, so we want to take the derivative of a function that is the sum of two other functions. Think to yourself if you have any guesses of what the answer is going to be. So what is the derivative? Um, I mean, it's like the 15th time I write this limit, I hope. Um, I hope I'm not surprising anyone when I write f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Should make that into a song. That way you will get to hear me singing. Okay, so now I need to actually write what I mean here. What is f? Well, f is g1 of x plus g2 of x. So here's f. So what is f of x plus h? Well, I'm supposed to uh, plug in x plus h into into the, the, the into the expression for f, which is this one. So take this expression, and everywhere you see and everywhere you see x, write down x plus h. So I see an x, I write x plus h, and now I see an x, and I write down x plus h, and and now I'm done. So this is the. This is what I'm supposed to simplify. This is supposed to have something to do with the derivative of g and the derivative of g1 and g2. So, um, well, the first thing I can do is I have these ugly brackets. I could get rid of them. That would, that would give me g1 of x plus h g2 of x plus h, and then just distribute that minus sign into the edge of the page. Um, g2 of x. Okay, so this limit, by the way, if you um, as long as g1 and g2 are continuous, which they're going to be if they're differentiable. Um, so this is 0 divided by 0. So how can I write this as two limits that I already know? If I know the derivatives of g and h.
just take the derivatives and add them together. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, um, so I wonder if eventually I'm gonna get, so am I gonna get to the derivatives added together at the end? P1 of x plus h, so the derivative, so this is one derivative and this is another derivative. And sometimes this is the legit problem solving strategy starting from the end and trying to get to the beginning because if they're all equal, it doesn't matter in which order I go. Uh, so how am I supposed to get from the left to the right? Well, now that I see this, I can guess that it's by splitting this fraction into two fractions. Um, so let's see if I left exactly the right amount of space. If I take this fraction and split it into two, into a fraction whose numerator has all the G1s and a fraction whose denominator has all the G2s. Then uh, the, the next step would be given by the limit law, given that I know those two limits on the right. Um, I know those two limits on the right. They're the derivative of G1 and the derivative of G2. This is G1 prime of X. Oh, Ooh. this was an X. G2 prime of X. So the answer, if you want to take the derivative of a sum, the answer is that you take the derivatives and add them together, like Matthew said. Um, this is um, what people call the derivative of the sum. So if you want to take the add two things and take the derivative, you would take the derivatives and add them together. Or in Leibniz notation. Take Can you go back for a sec? Yeah. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> Pf dx plus Pg dx. So the derivative of the sum. Um, so all right, real quick lending. What happens if I take the derivative of a difference of two functions? Just say it, someone. Is he the opposite? There you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, you subtract them. And we, I don't need to, I don't even need to do a new computation for this. Um, I don't need to do a new proof. What I can do is I can use the stuff that I know already. If I wanted to take the derivative um, of the difference, I could write that as a sum Every difference is a sum. And now by the, the, the fact that the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, I can split this sum into two derivatives. And now by the fact that the derivative of a constant multiple, negative one is a constant, is 
the fact that the negative one can come out of the derivative, I get negative one times g prime, and that, this gives me f prime minus g prime. So, so finally, I can. I can add derivatives together. I can multiply by a constant. I don't know how to multiply derivatives yet. Um, I can take powers. Uh, that means I can I can take derivatives of any polynomials. So, what if I wanted to take the derivative of x to the fourth? What's the first thing that I wrote? Four x to the fourth minus x squared plus three. So what is the derivative of this function? Well, if you look back to yesterday, we, were, we would have to write down this whole limit. It would be a pain. It would be doable. We would do it because we're heroes, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it in three minutes. But this I'm going to do in three minutes. So this is the derivative of this whole thing. And now I have a sum and, well, difference of things. And just like a sum of two things, um, the derivative of a sum of two things splits into the derivative, the sum of the derivatives, the same happens for three things, just do the do this rule twice. And now the derivative of four to the fourth, well, that's the constant multiple of x to the fourth. So I can take, um, I can take the four out. Now for x squared, I use the power rule because it's the base a constant. Uh, sorry, is the base x? Yes. Is the is the exponent a constant? Yes. Um, it's a two. So I get two x to the first power. And finally, the derivative of uh, three is zero because three is a constant. And finally, the derivative of x to the fourth, again, I can use the power rule. x is, uh, the base is x, the exponent is a constant. x cubed minus 2x, and that is just 16x cubed minus 2x. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Uh, okay, well, in conclusion, we learned how to take derivatives and poly of polynomials, and it's pretty easy. Uh, for, uh, and by pretty easy, I mean I can take derivatives of polynomials that are very complicated, and I don't have to think about it. The derivative of this polynomial, which would be nasty to write as a to to write as a limit. It's just I go all around multiplying by the exponent and subtracting one from the exponent. Um, here I get x to the zero. X to the zero is is one. So so that's the answer. It took me three seconds, and that's all I got. So the recording has stopped. Other things are happening. <clears throat>